Hi, welcome. Today I want to give you an update on my 10th grader and also share with you something new we've added in that he's actually doing with his fifth grade brother. So I will share that with you towards the end of the video. Hi, my name is Rachel. I am a homeschool mom of four boys, ages 10 to 20. I have graduated to this school year. I have a 10th grader and a fifth grader. And I'm going to be talking about my 10th grader, just giving you an update. Last time I did a video, it was more of like an overview of what was coming up this semester and what we were going to be doing. So I'm going to tell you how things are going and also share a little bit of what we've added in towards the end of the video. I do want to say things are going well for us, and I think it's just a little bit of me being a little bit uh, relaxed understanding that he is progressing, maybe not at the speed that I would expect, but I see progress and I see cooperation and I know that he is learning. So that is so important to me. We have done a lot of this curriculum. Sometimes we might read a history together. He does most of it on his own, but sometimes I'll be like, let's read together and then we'll discuss. We've done some of that with his health and also his science in government, all kinds of different things. So I enjoy that when I take the time to go ahead and see where he's at. Let's see what book you are reading today and make sure he's comprehending and understanding. So I'm gonna go ahead and mention his language arts first. For his grammar, he is using the Winston Grammar and this is going very well. There's a little things that we have tweaked so I will mention that to you just in case you're curious and you've used this or you're wondering how we're using it. We're just really using it like you're supposed to. It's pretty independent, but each lesson it just sort of focuses on one thing, but I have told him, and this is how we've done it over the years with grammar for our boys, just to label as much as you can and then look at the specifics for whatever that lesson may be asking and make sure that's included. Because he was sort of having trouble just pulling out specific things. I said, let's just label as much as you know, especially subject, verb, and the prepositions. Once you get those sort of out of the way, you can see the sentence a little bit more clearer and what the other things might be. So, but that is going great. He does that on his own. And then we are doing the IEW, the year one level C. I had to look because they changed how they word it sometimes for the levels. He is doing this on the computer online. I'm pointing over there because that is where the computer is at. So we are not doing the DVDs. We just went ahead and did the lifetime for the videos and that is going well. We are doing this more of like a half pace so it would carry on into the next school year. All right, I'm going to mention the guide we are using for his history and that is from Heart of Dakota and it is the US One Guide. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because we use it for history, government, and some of their literature books. And that is what I wanna mention for language arts. He just finished up, Up From Slavery by Booker T. Washington. And I had mentioned before that I found this on Audible. So he was able to listen to it as he followed along in the book. And he is not, the fastest reader and I really think it helps when he sees and listens it helps with his comprehension so this was a really good book and I I actually he usually did it at the table and did the audible on my phone so I tried to plan it where I was in the kitchen doing something or folding clothes so I enjoyed listening to it with him the next book also I found on audible but he has not started it yet is rifles for waiting and that's also in the guide. And I really do like how the guide has question and answer flow and annotates. And it's really been helpful to him to think about the book also as he's listening to it. So that is for his literature. And since I have the guide out, I will go ahead and mention the books that he is using for history. Okay, this is the handful of books that he is using for his history. This is probably 
one of the main spines that he is using. He is not, they do have like a living library in high school. It's a little bit different than their middle school guides, but he is not even using those. I also found this on audio that I just purchased. So he just sticks it. He actually, I think he sticks it in the computer and listens to it. So this, it's all going well. He has all these different books and reads them throughout the week. And he also has notebook work that he does that he has to either sometimes write about something he read or answer some questions and also has some mapping work. It was one of those days that I did some reading with him. I don't do that every day, but it was actually this book, which is more of a church history book through America. And I don't usually get to read or hear what's going on with him with his history, but this was really good. And I really started looking through it and it's really just giving like the gentleman we were reading about today was from the second awakening. So just love how it intertwines and gives you so much more information than you would just out of a regular textbook. He also has these DVDs, which I took the time. This was yesterday. He watched this and I took the time to sit down and watch that with him. And I was like, this is really good. So I don't always get a chance to do that either. And so these are a set of DVDs and it's not every day he watches them but it's all scheduled out, all these different books at different times throughout the week. And then also the notebook work that he has with that. He also has government in there, which is GVs, which is a noble experiment, which actually has DVDs and whatever happened to Penny Candy. And he really enjoys this book. This one is a little bit more in depth with the DVDs. And you know, government, unless it's really your thing that you enjoy studying or your interest, um, it, it is helpful when you have someone else to talk to you about it or discuss it. And sometimes I'm there, sometimes I'm not. So, but he's been doing well with it. And also we actually were able to get this DVD from the same company that the history DVDs were from. Now this was not scheduled in the curriculum but, and I, I think I may have gotten it free. <laughs> so we have some other ones from them, like something on World War One and World War II, and they're all really, really good. So I thought I would love to have this one too, but it was sitting on the shelf and a week or two ago, he was not feeling well. And I said, do you think you feel like watching something? <laughs> so he was willing. And so we just pulled this out as an extra. And I can't remember, it seemed like it was a little long. I don't remember if it says, but we just watched that because he wasn't really feeling that well. But this was just an extra. I'm just telling you about it. It was not actually part of his curriculum. Okay, for his science, he is using Biology 101. He has a notebook for that and work pages, quizzes, and it also encourages you to find other books and, or movies, YouTube, so we have found a YouTube channel that is more for the experiments. We also pulled out a couple DVDs that I just had on hand. He has watched, actually he's watched both of them. I didn't think he had watched this one, but he has. And he's also reading a book that is more for anatomy. He's also reading this book and he had read a book the first semester. And if you'd like, you can go back and see what that was, but it was a biology book by Tinner. So, and all that is going smoothly and well for him. He is also working on French for his foreign language. And that is one of the other things that is going very, very slow. He, and he told me, he's like, mom, if I'm going to get it, I have got to just take my time with it. And he's actually using First Art French and he talks about words and I know he's getting it. So I'm just letting him take it on his pace, making sure he's working on it. And we'll see what we're going to do if we're going to carry on with this, but um, he's definitely going to finish out this book. Almost forgot to mention math, which is Matthew C, Algebra 2. It is going very well this year compared to last, so we are pleased with that. I want to mention health, and I actually had mentioned that in the last video because we just started this the second semester here of his 10th grade year, 
And someone had put in the comments that they were using that or had used it for a one-year curriculum. And I started thinking, is it a one-year curriculum? And because one of my other boys had used it also, and I went back, sort of did some research. And from what I can tell, it's supposed to be a one-year curriculum. So I didn't realize that, but he is actually just going to be reading through it and doing the quizzes. There's usually two quizzes a chapter. So like a chapter a week is what he will do. And it's, it's going well. It is really a basic health curriculum so far. Um, I think I read, have read in and out some of it. He does most of it, but he is getting this done. And maybe I will try to give an actual review towards the end of the school year when he's done a little bit more of it. Okay, I do want to mention also that he does piano and he takes lessons every week. And that is something, I mean, he'll practice any time of the day. He spends a lot of time <laughs> practicing. So um, sometimes I have to say, um, you got to get your schoolwork done. But he really does enjoy it. So I am very thankful for that, though. Okay, I also want to mention that he does have opportunities like at church. Like he told me the next Sunday, he's going to give like a little five minute devotional. We have a bus route at our church where he has opportunities to speak and to help with the kids. So I'm thankful for that. And that gives him speaking opportunities. So I did want to share that with you. And he does do his own Bible. I have not mentioned Bible. And that is just something that he does in the morning on his own. He has his own reading schedule. And I think he's looking through a book for that also. All right. The new thing, I want to share that with you before I forget. Um, it is actually from Science Shepherd. Let me know if you have heard of them or if you've been curious. I have seen them probably the last couple years. I've sort of, they've been on my radar and I've just been a little bit curious about them and I've been looking into them a little bit more and I reached out and I had seen the Unearthing the Bible. I do not have a color printer, but here is what it would look like if it was in color. And I reached out to them and asked if they'd be willing to let me use it and look through it and do a review for them. And they agreed. So we're very excited. We're only a couple weeks in, but I at least want to let you know that we are using this. It's not a full curriculum. They do have full science curriculums from elementary middle school, high school, um, they have all different ones. And I'm all actually looking at one of those possibly for my fifth grader, which would be next year, he'd be in sixth. So this is what we are using. This is what caught my eye was I watched a sample and I really appreciated their biblical worldview. They're just showing you real things that have been discovered that prove that the Bible is real. So um, that have been talked about in the Bible and you have pretty much printables that for the students and for yourself, you have an answer key. And I think some of the books are actually where you can purchase them. I think this one might be only printable, but I um, wanted to just, just give you a little look at the students. They have work pages. I don't know if you can see those. They usually have like true or false questions, answers, word search puzzles, and then they actually have what would they would say is for advanced study, which is so some more in-depth questions with a crossword puzzle. And my 10th grader has done some of this, but not all of it. But we usually do discuss the questions, like he may not fill out everything, but we'll, we usually talk about it. And it doesn't take real long. The videos are probably, you know, under four minutes, maybe longer sometimes. I feel like the last one we watched was longer than that. And, you know, they could spend between everything up to 30 minutes. And I think they, I'm, we're only doing it like three days a week. So he is doing it for an extra. We're not giving him credit for anything. It is more upper elementary, maybe middle school for what I think they say the age is for. So now if you wanted to use it as a credit, it would be more of like you added into maybe if you were doing like an archaeology course with some books and you wanted to add in some videos and some other text and information. 
that would be a great add-in. We really have enjoyed it. I think this is actually our third week because I feel like we've talked about three different things they have discovered. So, but I will share a more in-depth video and review on that in the future, towards the end of the school year, but I wanted to share what we have added in and that they can do together and they have enjoyed it. I usually sit with them and learn also. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I appreciate you all watching and I will talk to you again soon.